Hey everyone and welcome to Age of Reason episode 39. My name is JC and I have another exciting episode for you today. Uh, I'm going to do part two of the topic I covered last week uh, and it talks about overpopulation and climate change. I just want to remind everybody that I have an online shop with merchandise set up on Redbubble. Uh, there is a link in the description. Uh, usually it's a lot of posters and uh, there's really a lot of different posters for all kinds of tastes. So check it out. Uh, I don't do the same thing. There's no point to keep doing the same thing. Uh, that, that just limits my creativity. So I try to do new things every time, try to experiment with something. Uh, I also want to remind people that I have my book out. Okay, probably this side is better. There it is, less reflections. Uh, Beyond the Obscure, uh, it's a pretty short book. It's only 100 pages long, so it's a, you know, you, you're not going to waste a lot of time reading it anyway. It's not like reading the Bible, which is well over a thousand pages in small font. Uh, anyway, this is a good story. It's a psychological uh, thriller, psychological horror slash thriller. I just got my first uh, review on Amazon and it was five stars. I'm very pleased about that. Uh, but of course, the point is to have more people actually buy it. Uh, I do have plans for a future book, but again, um, I just want to say, you know, I'm I don't do this do this kind of for the benefit of of mankind. Uh, if I was rich and wealthy, then sure, but I'm not at that point yet. So, uh, if people are not buying it, then I don't really have any motivation to to do the next one. It takes a lot of work. I don't know how many nights I was up until five o'clock trying to fix this this book. So I'm definitely not going through that again uh, if you know nobody's interested. So the article I'm going through today, the title is "Population Growth is a Threat to the World's Climate," and again, it's a continuation of last week's episode. So if you haven't seen that, please uh, check it out because I don't want to really repeat the things that I said last week. Okay, so this part I actually covered last week, but it's important to repeat uh, because it's people I think don't understand the scale sometimes of, of the events involved and uh, the scale is actually not that big as you'll find out. So uh, just the end of this piece here, it says that more than 30% of the human population lacks access to electricity. Uh, billions of people would not need to attain the American way of life. So, you know, uh, mini fridges, cars, uh, a lot of home appliances. It's not necessary to drastically increase global carbon emissions. A light bulb in every village would do it, right? So a light bulb, uh, it comes from coal burning or maybe a natural gas burning. Either way, uh, it's not good, but that's all it takes. That's really all it takes. We don't need to imagine this kind of extravagant lifestyle. It just needs a light bulb in every village. Maybe it means in every home, but anyway, I'm not really sure. You'll have to check with the writer of this article. The climate threat is now on everyone's lips. However, it is rarely mentioned together with population growth, despite the fact that they are interrelated. That is why actions to dampen population increase are missing. Though they were uh, they would lead to powerful reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, according to science article uh, by researchers from the USA. Uh, so researchers John Bongards at the Population Council of New York and Brian O'Neill at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, state the population increase was well discussed between the 50s and the 80s, but since then has more or less disappeared from the agenda. And that's not because life has gotten incredibly better. Uh, it's just because uh, people's focus has shifted elsewhere. This is noticeable on several levels. The IPCC, so that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, mentions that population growth is a factor behind climate warming, but is silent about how to tackle the problem. Exactly, because now what do you do? Uh, now it's kind of too late. Now we're at the stage where we have 7.5 billion people or so on the planet. What are you going to do? Are you going to commit genocide suddenly to eliminate billions of people? So now it's too late to think about that. The 
if you wanted to think about that, well, then probably the 50s, between the 50s and the 80s, was probably the right time to do that. Now we have to indeed think about alternative solutions. The reason for the silence, according to the new study, is political to a high degree. For many years, the importance of family planning was stressed, both in order to empower women in the world and as a way to reduce birth rates. But, but at the Global Population Conference in Cairo in 1994, this was toned down, largely due to resistance, and this is interesting, largely due to resistance from conservative and religious groups from a number of mainly Muslim countries. So, okay, I'm just going to finish this. At the same time, it became a taboo subject in the West. People did not want to offend the poor countries, says Frank uh, Gutmark. Okay, so again, we're treating the world as a bunch of snowflakes. Oh, we can't offend them. This is offensive. So we can't uh, even talk about it anymore. But it's interesting that it says it comes, the resistance comes from conservative and religious groups. Well, okay, I live in Japan. And there is a lot of conservatives in Japan. So, of course, conservatives here, not quite the same as conservatives in the States, but conservatives mean conservative. At, at the end of the day, uh, they basically try to preserve the status quo. And uh, there's a lot of rituals here that are performed. For example, they, they slaughter... Uh, dolphins, they slaughter whales, uh, not for scientific research. That, that thing has stopped long time ago, okay? I know that they will, sometimes you will see articles on that, that Japan is conducting uh, research on whale hunting. There's no research there. That, that's all nonsense. That, that has finished decades ago. Now it's just for profit and uh, uh, in these type of small villages, they actually do that because of tradition, because of conservative values. They want to preserve what their ancestors were doing. And it's wrong, and they may even think about that it's wrong, but they still do that because their ancestors keep doing that. And that's very disappointing, of course. Nevertheless, it is striking how climate and population issues are connected. The curves of population growth and carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere since the 80s almost precisely follow each other. Population growth automatically increases energy consumption, which in turn means increased greenhouse gas emissions, says Gutmark. However, this relationship is often neglected. I talked about that on last week's show. Actually, uh, let me just uh, load up the curve again here. So we have the curve. Uh, you can basically see that they go hand in hand. Uh, I don't really see why it's a surprise to people that it is this way. And I, lo I know a lot of people say, well, it's not really the individual, it's more the big factories, the big dirty factories, the coal burning. I mean, I don't do any coal burning, for example. Uh, okay, so my footprint then is smaller than, you know, a power plant. Yay. So what? But uh, I still have a car. Uh, I still use power, you know, electricity, even for the show. There's a bunch of lights on right now. And this doesn't come from renewable energy. This comes from, uh, in Japan, they still burn a lot of coal. And yes, there is nuclear power as well. But I'm sure you're aware of all the problems related to that, especially in Japan. So... They go hand in hand, and I, I gave the example last week, but again, it's important to repeat this point. Uh, if I buy some product, for example, on Amazon, sometimes, or, okay, actually often, that product is manufactured in China. So it's manufactured most likely in very dirty conditions, and then they use some, you know, very antiquated truck. Uh, I've seen these in China when I was there. Really old trucks, dirty trucks. They use that to transport it to a warehouse and then that gets onto an airplane. Airplane, again, huge problem there. That gets shipped to the States. And finally, you get it delivered to your door. Uh, but that whole process is extremely not uh, clean. And I don't pay an extra tax for that. There is no extra tax for that. So uh, in some countries, they might have a, a carbon tax, but... A lot of them don't, and there's a lot of opposition usually to carbon taxes. The reason is very simple. The reason is because the carbon tax is most 
often passed on to the customer. So the power plant or whatever, they will not, um, uh, you know, they will not pay more in taxes. They will instead increase the rate perhaps. And then anyway, you have to pay that. It's always us. It's always the people at the bottom who have to pay for it. Uh, so if people are wondering, well, what's the solution? Uh, carbon tax is, is, is all right. But like I said, it has these issues. Perhaps what is better is an emissions trading scheme. And that's a very complicated thing to explain. Uh, if people are interested, I can sh share articles with, on that. But that's perhaps the way to go. And of course, we have to trans keep transitioning to renewable um, power sources, um, well, as quickly as possible, really. All right, let's continue with this. So many people think, for example, that population growth does not matter in poor countries because their emissions per capita are low. And, and that's true. That's certainly true. But if they want to achieve progress, they will have to uh, burn more fossil fuels. And that's the problem. So right now their emissions per capita are very low. But if they're trying to achieve, you know, again, the American dream, then those emissions will rise up to, to the levels of, um, you know, China, India, USA, because these people want to live well as well. Nevertheless, it is a fundamental misconception, uh, right? Bongarts and O'Neill, uh, dampened population growth in the world would reduce greenhouse gas emissions in the long term by 40% or more, according to a study in The Lancet from 2012. Another study from 2010 in the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences shows that emissions could decrease by 29% already by 2050 by slowing population growth which would be a crucial contribution to reducing the risks of a steep temperature rise by, uh, by the end of the century. Bongartz and O'Neill point out that UN forecasts suggest that the global population will increase from today's 7.6 billion to 11.2 billion people by the end of the century. And in the worst case, we could reach 13.3 billion to believe this unprecedented increase will not affect the climate is to completely ignore reality, according to the researchers. So again, uh, if you just go back to the, to the curve, uh, you can see that the population was more or less stable. You know, we had 1 billion even up to 1930. Then there was the war, so there's of course a natural decrease there. Uh, let's say it's still at 1 billion in 1950, but then uh, between 1950 and 1980, there's this huge, huge explosion of population. Uh, a population growth that was unmanaged, largely. Another misconception is that family planning in poor countries is not providing any results. On the contrary, they're right. Different actions have proved to be surprisingly effective in some countries. One good example is Bangladesh where access to cheap contraceptives and healthcare for women has led to a sharp decline in birth rates. A comparison with Pakistan is striking. In 1980, they both had exactly the same population, about 80, 80 million. Wow, 80 billion, that would be, that would be extreme. 80 million. In uh, 2100, they estimate the population of Pakistan will be more than twice as big as Bangladesh's, 360 versus 170 million. The reason is that Pakistan has lacked family planning programs. And indeed, they uh, show the curves with projections. Uh, the population of Bangladesh is curving. And Bangladesh, by the way, is a huge, huge danger from climate change. Uh, for them, I think a one meter uh, sea rise is, is catastrophic for the nation. So there's that too. Uh, Pakistan, I think, does not have to deal with uh, such a uh, problem immediately, but uh, anyway, you can see that the projections for Pakistan, they go much, much higher. 10,000 years ago, towards the end of the Ice Age, when people first began to farm the land, there were probably up to 2 million people on Earth. By the time of Christ's birth, well, again, that point is very debatable, especially for me. 2,000 years ago, the number had risen to 200 to 300 million the population grew relatively slowly over the following centuries to around 1 billion people around 1800. The rate increased significantly after the Industrial Revolution. 
by 1950, we were 2.5 billion people on Earth. That was still manageable at this point. What happened after that cannot be described as anything else than a population explosion. Since 1950, over the course of 65 years, the total number of people on the planet has tripled to 7.6 billion today. And oh, how we laughed and how we enjoyed life these days with so much pressure coming from the, just the sheer number of people out there. Well, um, that's it for today's episode. Uh, look, I, I hope you learned something. This is definitely something to think about, overpopulation. A lot of people, uh, like these articles mention, uh, a lot of people don't even think about it. It doesn't enter the thought process, doesn't enter the equation. And yet, it's a, it's a huge, huge factor when we think about uh, stuff. Uh, the more people there are, the more consumption there is. So I've heard people say, well, then we need to fight the consumerism culture. And yeah, perhaps that's also somewhere in there. But if you have less people, you have less consumption. So there's also that. Anyway, this is uh, an issue that a lot of countries will have to resolve. I know that a lot of what we call developed countries have actually a falling birth rate. Um, Japan has that and uh, US has that. Most of European countries have that. Uh, most of the growth is actually expected to come from Africa and Asia. And there was one lecture that was floated about uh, regarding this topic. Uh, I don't remember who it was exactly, but he was talking about this. Hey, we're going to have 10 billion people uh, by the end of the century and everything's going to be good. We're going to have more production. Everybody's going to be richer. And yet his entire presentation, it was a one hour lecture or something like that. His entire presentation did, did not include even one mention on climate change. So I don't know how you can talk about this topic and yet completely ignore climate change. Beats me. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Uh, make sure you click on that bell so they notify you when I drop a new video. Uh, sometimes they unsubscribe people. I've seen that happen. I've heard that happen. So make sure you are subscribed and I'll see you next week. I don't know what the topic will be, but uh, as I've said before, I have many, many articles on climate change to go through. So there's a very high percentage uh, that I will be talking about climate change. I have about double uh, the amount of articles on climate change than I do on um, atheism. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway... Uh, until next time, see you.